What's up guys? I hope you're doing well. I'm definitely doing well actually, because I just released my Ink Elements pack and I thought it would be cool to show you guys how you can use these elements to create some really cool looking transitions. Now these elements are super easy to use and works with Premiere, After Effects, DaVinci and Final Cut Pro. I'm going to show you guys the basics in Premiere and as we get more advanced I'm going to move over to After Effects. If you like to do your VFX in Premiere or DaVinci or Final Cut, I'm pretty sure you can figure out a way to do the advanced stuff uh, in these softwares as well. Uh, but yeah, let's start with the basics. Okay, so doing this effect in Premiere is super easy. So I got a shot of me. Uh, this is shot in Spain actually. Pretty cool shot, nice colors. Then I have a shot of Jonas uh, in uh, Spain also. Nice colors as well. And then I have one of the 15 ink transitions. So I'm gonna put that on top of the Jonas clip, just like that. Then I'm gonna go up to the effects and search for track matte key. You then wanna drag that effect onto the Jonas clip, just like that, and head up to the effect controls and switch the matte to video two, just like that. I'm also gonna switch the matte alpha to matte luma, like that. And for some reason, Premiere has this bug that it kind of scales and switch the position of the ink for some reason. So you just have to put it back where it belongs. Just scale it and put the position back. Yeah, That's, uh, that's Premiere in a nutshell. Now select the Jonas clip and uh, check this box, reverse box. And now we basically have our transition ready. The only thing we're going to do is that we're going to select both layers and nest them together. Just like that and just, just can name it, you can name it whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to call this uh, transition. Then I'm going to put it on top of uh, the shot of me. And we're basically done. So that's how you can use this transition in Premiere. But I think it's time to show the true potential of this pack. And I'm going to do that in After Effects. Okay, so we made it over to After Effects. And this is a shot that we're going to recreate. Bam. This is so sick, like, it kind of reminds me of, uh, like, this Doctor Strange portal, for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. Kind of takes Jan here and teleports him to this uh, mystical mountain place. Yeah. This is what the clip looks like without the VFX and transition. Just like that. So, the clip I'm using is uh, this Storm clip that I actually made myself using stock footage. Looks like this. Pretty simple stuff. And then I also have a rotoscope of Jan. That took me probably 30 minutes to make. It's not perfect, but it's it's more than good enough. Uh, I also matched the lighting to Jan as well to uh, make the shots blend better. So the first thing we need to do is to track the main clip. And the reason we need to do that is because the camera is moving, obviously. Uh, search uh, 3D camera tracker and just drop that on. And go to the advanced tab and hit detailed analyzes. I always do this. I mean, I don't see a reason why not to do that, because it doesn't take that much more time and you always want a good track. The reason I'm tracking this shot is that I want the snow mountain clip to stick to the footage. And I also want the ink to stick to the footage as well. I mean, it just looks more advanced and it looks way more real. Uh, if I didn't track this, it would have kind of looked weird, I guess. Okay, so our tracking is done. And as you guys can see, we have a lot of tracking points to choose between. And I'm gonna go ahead and just choose the tracking points on the building right here. I'm also gonna choose on the building right here, but you, you have to hold down shift to do that. So hold down shift and select like that. And the reason I'm selecting so many tracking points is that I want a really good track. Uh, and this should definitely do the job. So when you're done selecting, just right click and hit create solid and camera. Just like that. And now we should have a solid that sticks to our camera motion. And this looks really good. So the next step is to replace the storm footage with the solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the solid and find our storm footage, hold down option or alt if you're on PC and just drag it on top like this, release. So now our storm footage is matching the camera motion of our shot, which is nice. And yeah, this tracks really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale, scale it up. I'm actually gonna scale it up a lot because you, you don't want, um, as you guys can see, like these edges right here, 
this is uh, this is a no-no, a big, big no-no. Like, you don't want to see the edges, so make sure that you scale it up. The reason for this is that the camera is moving all over the place, so yeah. I'm gonna have to scale it up uh, a lot just to make sure that you don't see the edges. Also, make sure that the horizon is always, you know, matching the original shot. Like, you don't want your mountain up there or down there, like, keep it, like, as the original shot, uh, if that makes sense. Let's have a look! Okay, this is uh, starting to look decent. I'm gonna add the rotoscope clip of Jan and make sure that you put it on top, uh, not underneath your storm clip, but uh, on top, like that. And now we actually have a pretty sick, uh, sick clip, in my opinion. Look at this, looks super sick. The only thing that is, you know, weird is that the, the transition is way too uh, sudden, I guess. Yeah, we basically need a cool transition between the shots. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where our ink transition comes in. So, select the storm layer, duplicate it, that's Command-D on Mac and Control-D on PC. Then, you want to go into the Ink Elements pack and basically just find a transition. I'm a huge fan of the Ink Fast, I think that's a really good one. Hold down Option while having selected the, the storm clip and just drag it on top, like that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, this is super sick, this is gonna look incredible. You can also do like small adjustments, like scaling it up and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep it as it is actually. I think this this looks super sick. So yeah, so next step is to select our ink, select our storm clip and select the camera. And right click and pre-compose. And you can just name this whatever you want, it's not important. Like, it's not important. Just, yeah, name it whatever you want. <laughs> Hit OK and go into the composition and select the ink layer, Ooh. select the ink layer, and make it a silhouette luma. And if you can't see the blending modes, uh, just try to hit this button. Usually it does the work. Um, yeah, select select silhouette luma. And now what happens is that uh, the white disappear, but the black is still there. So this is what it looks like now, which is pretty cool. And if you go back to the main comp and play it back, we can see the final result. And that's just insane. Yeah, <laughs> you guys saw how fast I just did this. Like, if this was a tutorial, this would have taken me minutes, minutes. That's that's insane. And the really cool thing about this is that if you're not happy with the transition, you can just go into the precomp and just change it, super fast. All you have to do is to find a new transition. Let's go for a. Let's see what the the wipe one looks like. Okay, cool. So let's add that one instead. So let's select the layer. And just simply just select the wipe one and just hold down option and drag it on top. And let's see what that looks like. Whoa, okay. That was actually way better than I thought. Imagine adding like a sound effect to that one. That's so sick. What? Okay, let's add another one. Uh, let's go for the, the ink expand. Let's try that one. Uh, again, hold down the option button and just drag it on. Like that. Whoa. <laughs> this looks sick already. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Jesus. What I'm trying to say here is that this pack basically allows for a very fast workflow. If you don't like a transition, you can always switch it, and switching it only takes a few seconds. I'm super, super proud of this pack. I'm, I put my heart and soul into it, and I'm also very excited to share it with you guys. So if you decide to buy this pack and uh, make something cool, please send it to me on Instagram, and maybe I'll share it. If you had a fun time watching this tutorial, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys soon.